I will uh, quickly give a short appraisal of big P4 inhibitors. Uh, uh, just to give an overview of, uh, just an introduction of this topic, DPP4 inhibitors, typically we are talking about those gliptins, primarily, right, the citagliptin, saxagliptin, bildagliptin, all the gliptins, there are close to about 12 gliptins in the market in the treatment of diabetes, right, and um, I'm going to just give you a complete overview of all these 12 compounds in one shot, therefore we get a uh, get a, a simple view about the class of drugs, number one. Number two, there's another question, was it a sponsored lecture? It's not a sponsored lecture, right? It's a pure, uh, our own uh, initiative to take one drug class and see whether it's therapeutically useful or not. From a typical, from a perspective of uh, all the literature, literature evidences and, you know, overall evidences. So with that, I get started. management, uh, the, the, as you can see here, we have a one hand As you can see here, the management of diabetes, the first line treatment remains as lifestyle management, primarily, and metformin as a first line, always. So metformin and uh, lifestyle is number one. And then, if the patient doesn't achieve the HP1C target, then it goes into the next stage. So they typically evaluate whether the patient has got an atherosclerotic CVD, right, or CKD. If the patient is either a case of atherosclerotic CVD or CKD, then they go on to this particular uh, algorithm. This particular algorithm talks about if there is atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease proven, then or if, if that predominates, then you start with GLP-1 receptor agonist, or you can talk, start with SGLP2 transport or uh, inhibitor. And if CKD or heart failure predominates, then start with SGLP2 uh, inhibitors. Then the HPNC is target is met within this, you are fine. If your target is not met, then you go on to either use a combination of these two, and then come to use a DPP4 basal insulin, diazolidine dynamic, and sulfonylurea. So it's a completely a paradigm shift from the days when we started. Diamond used to be a simple prescription to start with, and then metformin. Gone are those days now, and uh, diamond, uh, you know, sulfonylurea have been relegated to the last result. And then insulin has become the next last result. So, and it's all, it starts with metformin, that is good. All other things, there is, there appears to be a lot of Right. So let's get into that and then see how it is. Next. Yeah. So, so we have, uh, not surprisingly, we have about 12 different molecules in uh, this DPP4 inhibitor category. So we're starting from citagliptin, ritagliptin, way back in 2006, to the latest gosagliptin, right, which is 2016. Right. We have a plethora of various uh, glyptins. Right, and introduced, uh, uh, close to about half of them are introduced in Indian market already. Next. So, before we get into this uh, topic, just quickly understand what is this DPP. DPP stands for dipeptidyl peptidase. It's just nothing but a peptidase enzyme, which acts on peptidase substrates and cleaves those peptides into active to inactive kind of thing. So it acts on glucagon-like peptide, GLP-1, GLP-2, and glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, then SDF-1. These are all some of the places where the dipeptidyl peptidase enzyme acts. And this enzyme is inhibited by DPP-4 inhibitors. That's why we call them as DPP-4 inhibitors. Uh, next. Next slide. So just a little bit about GLP-1. GLP-1 is secreted from the 
distal portion of the intestinal tract, a particular cell called L cells, right? And uh, there are the active GLP-1 that is secreted by the L cells, right, gets cleaned by DPP-4 enzyme. So this enzyme breaks that GLP-1 produced by L, L cells and makes it inactive. So GLP is a, has a very short half-life, quickly gets inactivated. And if you inhibit DPP-4 enzyme, then you could have GLP circulating in the system for a longer time, the benefits thereof. That is the, uh, the prima facie uh, philosophy or the concept behind introduction of uh, DPP-4. Intact uh, GLP-1 enhances, the, these are the things that it does. One, glucose-mediated insulin secretion. Number two, it suppresses glucagon secretion. It has some effect on appetite, gastric emptying, and actions on, these are all the actions mediated by GLP-1 receptor. DPP-4 enzyme cleavage eliminates the, I think it's too much. It just to say that this GLP-1 gets destroyed faster by DPP-4 enzyme and gets converted into inactive substances. So by inhibiting DPP-4 enzyme, you can have GLP for a longer period of time and get the benefits thereof. Next. The second enzyme is GIP. GIP is also produced in the intestine, more in the proximal part of the uh, small intestine. And GIP is expressed in cells of pilot cells uh, of pancreas and has an effect on insulin secretion. So again, GIP is inactivated by DPP-4. So if you inhibit DPP-4, then GIP circulates for longer period of time. The same thing what happened to GLP. So in other words, next slide. This particular slide explains that the mechanism of action of GLP, number one, it, um, let's say, it, it increases the insulin secretion, it reduces glucagon secretion, it improves insulin uptake by the tissue, peripheral tissues, right? And this GLP is destroyed by DPP-4. If you use DPP-4 inhibitors, GLP-1 level goes up and you get all these benefits. Therefore, glucose reduction. Right. The same in the case of GIP, if you inhibit GIP destruction, then insulin secretion goes up, glucose uptake goes up, therefore reduction in blood glucose, so you get the anti-diabetic effect. Next slide. So the DPP-4 inhibitors, then because they inhibit the DPP-4 enzyme, they have effect on the pancreatic islet cells, so they have effect on enhancement of beta cell functions. In the intestine, the early animal studies have shown that it decreases the lipoprotein production and in the immune cells it, decreased, it uh, increases the chemotaxis and it also improves the progenitor cells therefore it could possibly be of value in vascular ischemic uh, episodes. So this is the overall anticipation for the DPP-4 inhibitor in terms of its outcomes. Next slide. I just want to give you an idea of what stromal cell derived factor SDF1. SDF1 also is one of the substances where DPP-4 acts. When you give DPP-4 inhibitors, right, possibly there is an increased tissue healing uh, and it could be of value in ischemic uh, situations. This is the anticipation of the early studies. Next slide. However, uh, what happened is this particular theory when it was explored further uh, in certain studies, right? Uh, for example, this study called the Sitagramic trial, right? It did a study on the infarction cases, showed that there is no uh, practical value for that particular early Findings. So the early finding did not translate to a clinical benefit. So next. So finally, the net net of it is that um, 
how does it, how much uh, of uh, glucose, how much of HbA1c comes down is the key point. And if HbA1c comes down, so what happens beyond that? Is that is there any cardiovascular benefit? When all of us know that diabetes is now classified as one of the cardiovascular problems, typically, and uh, there is an established cardiovascular disease with uh, diabetes, the vasculature goes into a disease condition. So uh, this uh, this particular thing only proves that how diabetics are more prone for cardiovascular problems as compared to the normal population. So the, the hazard ratio increases at least to two times as compared to the normal population. So diabetes per se is a heart disease. It does make one person to be uh, a, a, a cardiovascular patient. Next one. So, uh, Somewhere in 2008, the, the US FDA came out with a regulation, first it started with a recommendation, that saying that you are reducing uh, HbA1c, which is okay, which is good, but mere reduction in HbA1c, mere you know, reduction in glucose levels should translate into cardiovascular outcome. That means there should be lower mortality or lower morbidity that should be something related to cardiovascular outcome. Otherwise, there is no point in having a drug which will simply reduce the uh, blood sugar. Right? And that is the concept. And then it started with the recommendation that later on it went on to a, uh, a must-have kind of a, uh, guidance. So the, the advent of uh, CO studies uh, started with uh, such regulation in USFDA. Excellent. So this is how the trend of uh, Seaward started. Seaward guidance started in 2008, and Seaward became must in these all these conditions. So to, by 2015, most of the drugs that have come, they all have been studied for cardiovascular outcomes. So, so this is the kind of evolution from DCCT in 1950, 95. Today we have all studies, all medications that have come in are all studied for cardiovascular or seaward or cardiovascular outcome trials. Next slide. These are some of those uh, studies. These are all studies conducted with DPP-4 inhibitors, Savartimi, Examin, Ticos, Omnica, Carmelina. These are all fancy names, but then these are all uh, some abbreviations converted to some nice names. But then they are all cardiovascular safety trials. Next slide. So quickly to look at uh, whether glyptins have any cardiovascular benefit or not. So I am just going to take, take some key points, key slides and then have a look at it. The cost study showed that citadlyptin didn't offer any benefit. Next slide. It's a, it's a study conducted on 14,000 and odd patients, right, a placebo uh, compared study it showed that there is no difference between citagrepin and placebo in terms of cardiovascular issues. Like there is no benefit. Next slide. So you can look at this. Primary endpoint, zero. There is no difference as compared to placebo. So it is. it did not show any kind of a benefit. Next slide. There is absolutely placebo and uh, the active drug did not offer any benefit when it comes to cardiovascular parameters. Next. Next. This is another glyptin, alloglyptin, and the study is examined. Next slide. Next. It's about 5,400 patients. Again, the, the, you can move to the next, uh, next, next. There is a very insignificant difference. These are all very insignificant differences. So again, did not show any value at all. So alloglyptin was as <coughs> as bad as placebo or as good as the placebo. So citagliptin, alloglyptin, next slide. Yeah, we didn't see any benefit with alloglyptin, next slide. Sever TV with the saxagliptin, next slide. Sever TV, um, in fact, showed Again, no benefit, no advantage, but there is some bit of higher incidence of heart, heart failure hospitalization. So, creating a little bit of concern that uh, 
it's not only neutral on the heart, in some, some clippings could also be, could also have a propensity for to travel more into a negative side. It could have a potentially negative effect. That's particularly with reference to saxophone. Excellent. No difference. No difference. No difference at all. Excellent. Next. So Sabra TV didn't show any kind of a value. Next. So since they did not didn't have any cardiovascular effect, then we I tried to see if there any other benefit that there is no other benefit too. There is no big benefit in terms of weight reduction. It's weight neutral. It neither gains weight nor it loses weight. So on the cardiovascular side it is neutral, it's as good as placebo. On the weight reduction or on that kind of benefits, we didn't find any results, any positive results. Next slide. Uh, is it, does it have any other cardiovascular benefits on the blood pressure and things like that? Didn't have, there are no, it did not show in the flow mediated uh, dilatation. It did not show uh, any kind of an improvement in the endothelial function. Next slide. It also, the, the effect on the intestinal lipoprotein secretion which was shown in the early studies did not turn out to reduce uh, LDL or improve HDL, no. So it was lipid neutral, right? So even that was not a value. Next slide. So very clearly, to conclude, uh, DPP-4 inhibitors are not cardioprotective. There is no additional value other than reduction in glucose. Reduction in HbA1c. That's all. The bottom line is one line. You have some reduction in the HbA1c, but beyond that, don't expect anything out of DPP. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So the average reduction is also not great. I mean, it's not that you know there is all. It's, it's fantastic and things like that. It is something like somewhere between 0.69 to 0.85 is the overall HbA1c reduction in a patient who has got 8.25. So it comes to about 7.5 7 or 7.4. So it is not also great. It is slightly better than acarbose, right? Why I call it, why I compared it with acarbose is acarbose also increases the GLP levels. So try to see whether this increases GLP level, does it, is it comparable? Somewhat better than acarbose, very, very uh, insignificantly better than acarbose. Acarbose needs to be taken every time before food. This has to, this can be taken any time irrespective of the food. Those are all minor value. The real value proposition, I don't see any. Right? I don't see anything with the DP before any bit Right? <coughs> the results are, uh, to me, on the appraisal side, it looks very disappointing. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, the market of diabetes is something like 12,000 crores. 12,000 crores is the diabetes, anti-diabetic products. This 12,000 crores, DPP-4 enjoys about 1,200 to 1,800 crores value. Right? On this 12,000 crores, 1,500 to 1,800 crores is DPP-4 and its combination. No use. Right? There's no value. Next one. Next one. So, adverse effects, if you look at it, DPP-4 can because it disturbs the immune system, but perhaps there is a slight propensity to develop infectious or uh, immunological modification, perhaps a viral infection, or uh, very common of URTI, LRTI, and UVI, right? And in some cases, uh, severe cases or some rare cases, you can have patients with anaphylaxis or angioedema or with Stephen Johnson's approach. So this is very important. That it may be rare, but still you need to know. Is that the judges fool you on when the consumer comes in? So, glyptin should be used with caution in patients with history of pancreatitis. It is better to rule out any, any past history of pancreatic issues with the glyptins. So, net net of it, if you look at it, this is what you get. You get some kind of a mild benefit with HbA1c. Beyond that, uh, that 1,800 crores or something like that's all. Funny. Next. 
So in summary, um, we have close to several millions of patients who have already taken DPP-4 inhibitors. The recent description of increased rates of hospitalization in a, for heart failure in a small subset of saxagliptin and other DPP-4 inhibitor, uh, inhibitor treated patients mandates further investigations. So, so that is all about this particular class. Next slide. Okay, so this looks to be as an interesting concept which did not translate into a clinical value. There is a small clinical value in terms of say about 0.7% or 0.8% reduction in HbA1c. But beyond that, no benefit in hypertension, no weight benefit, no metabolic benefit, and no cardiovascular benefit, outcome benefits. So this uh, agent is something which you have to be, you have to think whether you really need to prescribe or not. Right? And this lecture is not sponsored by any pharma company and it's pure with going by evidences. Thank you very much. Three points from your side. One, it is very nice to hear this lecture here. And hear the same lecture in Deputy Associated India today morning sponsored by MSB. Not trust. 35 years ago, gentlemen, I gave a lecture in India, the Orish India, the technique and pharmacology, that is on footprints on the sense of time, footprints on the sense of pharmacology. The drugs that appeared and that drug disappeared. Of course, I don't have a hard copy of it now. Therefore, many drugs will appear, but apart from that, I will make three points. One, no drug has matched the pleiotropic effect of insulin in diabetes breakfast. Insulin bovine passing onto the human deltinary in the insulin, onto the insulin substitutes, has got pleiotropic effect which no other drug has matched. Therefore, whether the recommendations pushing insulin down is really valid, accepted, we should take for granted. I think we should not accept it like we have not accepted that the upgrading of the HBA for the sake of one point. The second point is pushing down also the glutamine and glycoside, which have got an insulin stimulating action, maybe to the point of exhaustion. We still, if price is reduced, may be a valuable drug in the overall economic setting of the management of diabetes. After all, we are talking so much about the glycemic variability, and glycemic variability is equal to economic variability. This month, month, first month, he has got budget, he buys the anti diabetic drugs. Next month, if he doesn't have the budget, he doesn't buy the anti diabetic drugs. There is a social glycemic variable. Further, better have a drug that may not be that scientifically on the top, will be taken for the These are the some points from the field conditions. On to the population first points. Basically, I want to view. Uh, I started that, that, you know, we used to prescribe this dionyl and then glibipride and things like that, but now it's all now out of, it has gone down into the bottom of the pit in the algorithm. But then I also saw, is there any agenda behind it? The cost of uh, sulfonylurea and metformin, right, is about 140th of the latest drugs. So our own prescription, right, one, our prescription has become 40 times more valuable today, right? And uh, the 1,800 crores of only glyptin, right? So any number of CMAs you can conduct. You can always conduct 1,000 CMAs if you get 1,800 crores, right? Because, you know, how much, how many 1,000 CMAs will not cost about 1,000, one, one and a half crores. So one and a half crores uh, and you spend and then you get 1,500 crores. See? And uh, I also did a calculation, 30,000 crores that diabetes and cardiology market together. So try to see how much the pharma company is spending. All best case they are spending about 100 crores. So the best return on investment from a doctor, the doctor gives 667 times the money invested in, in him. If you put one rupee on Dr. Perimal, he gives 666 rupees, 7 rupees every year. You don't have to worry else. You just have to convince him, that's all. And then he gives 667 rupees every year or year, one rupee only of his spend. That's the beauty. So we are 
fantastic cash cows and we work really hard to make somebody very prosperous. Just you have to give, sir, give me one rupee, then I will give you 670 rupees every year. What a great man. We need a very good story. Lallavan Suridam, another point in your report. That is how it is. So there is a lot of, it's not just all that. There is, there is some value in all these things, but then you know, it's the appraisal. To me, it shows that it's not a, a great advantage as agent. It's a side point. I agree with the Professor Tanushek. In our context, you should think about that. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I uh, request our past president of money to come and hand over the certificate of appreciation to our present president.